everyone, I'm Ashley and in my video today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 most owned authors. Now I'm doing my own top 5 Wednesday topic this week because none of the topics for June were ones I really had a lot to say about or could have come up with a list about or were really that interested in doing a video for. So I've come up with a couple of my own top 5 Wednesday topics and actually Kim from one of my favorite channels, Kim Here, whose channel I will leave a link to in the description box below, is the one who inspired me to do this because she's doing a similar thing where she's always going to do a top five Wednesday on Wednesdays but if the topic for the actual Goodreads group isn't one that she is interested in she's coming up with one on her own so I thought that was a great idea especially considering this month I was really only interested in one of the topics and I didn't have time to film and that was last week's topic so I've got a couple of my own starting with this week and like I said this week's is top five most owned authors and I'm gonna be going from number five to number one so number one's gonna be at the end and I own 27 books from that author and I bet if you've been on my channel for any period of time you might be able to guess who that is but since there's so many books on here and I don't want to have to hold them up for a really long amount of time, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it and let you know also that I'm including ebooks in the count for each author. So I'm going to be hecka awkward for this whole entire video because I don't know how to hold all these in a way you can see them and also show my face. So probably throughout this video I'm going to be attacked by books on my head, but <laughs> it's all for the sake of the video, all for the booktubes, so... Here we go. Coming in at number 5 is Sarah Dessen with 12 books and these are all 12 I have. I have everything that she has done so far um, except for the one that's coming out next month which is I believe called Once and for All. Okay this is a little bit better actually. So here they all are. I have read all of these except for Dreamland right here which is one of the smallest ones so that's pretty pathetic. <laughs> um, but I've heard really 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 great things about that one actually so I'll probably try to finish that one this summer so I can say I've read everything by her except for that newly published one but I've read all these other ones my favorites are these two right here the truth about forever and this lullaby actually I like this lullaby so much that I whenever I have a daughter I want to name her Remy which is a name that I first heard of when I read this lullaby and I have been reading Sarah Dessen for over 11 years now. I started reading her when I was 15 years old, so it's been about 12 years at this point, and she has such a special place in my heart. She is just the queen of young adult, you know, she's been doing it for so long, and I just love everything she's written. They're so easy, they're so just character driven and they really delve into the issues of each individual girl. Each girl has such a relatable setting and I obviously highly recommend these because I own and have read all of them. Coming in at number four with 14 is Gail Foreman and that includes all of these and one ebook copy of her latest novel Leave Me which I have a e-arc copy of and as you can see I am trash for Gail Foreman. I have multiple copies of her books including one that isn't shown here because I lent it to somebody like three years ago and haven't got it back which was stupid of me because it's a signed hardcover copy of just one year and I'm gonna put some of these down so I can talk about them. So Gail Foreman is my favorite young adult author of all time. She writes two of my favorite books of all time, If I Stay in Just One Day. The One of the only ones I haven't read by her is I Was Here and I've actually got two copies of it just because they have different covers and I like to own every possible edition of her books and I'm on a hunt to find them all and own them all so even though I haven't read it that's why I have two copies of this one but like I said if I stay is one of my favorite books of all time which is why I own so many freaking copies of it and the other one where she went which is told from Adam's point of view but that's why I own so many copies of it also that way I can loan it out to people without having to worry about me having my own copy should I ever have the desire to reread it and somebody has my version of it for three years because apparently that's a thing that happens. I also super shamefully have not read Just One Year or Just One Night mostly because Just One Day was so amazing to me. I like cried when I finished it because I couldn't believe it was over and I didn't want it to be over and I just am dreading the thought of their story being completely over and having that be all that there is. I know that's already all that there is since these books exist. Just because I haven't read them doesn't mean the story isn't over but it's not over for me so I'm dreading having to read these two but I plan to read them by the end of this year. They are on the very top of my TBR list for this year after the All Souls trilogy. Number three is 
Lily McDaniel with 20 books. I'm probably out of frame or the books are out of frame. Oh well, here's all 20. I'm gonna put them down now because this hurts. So this is the only one of the ones that I own by Lurleen McDaniel that I haven't read. It is Losing Gabriel and this just came out I think within like the last two-ish years, so that's why I haven't read it yet. I started reading Lurleen McDaniel super obsessively when I was in middle school. I spent all three of my summer months when I was out of school with my grandparents, and they would take me to the nearest Barnes & Noble, which was about half an hour away. They would buy me a bunch of books, just so many books, and I just fell in love with Lurleen McDaniels because they were really thin and really easy to read, and they really made me interested in medicine because it's super depressing, but all of her books center around kids who have cancer, like teenagers with cancer and other sorts of illnesses and diseases. But that was really angsty, and it involved a lot of angsty friendships and romances, and again, made me interested in medicine. So I blew through all her books in middle school. When I didn't own one, I would check it out from the library, and I have read more than just these ones that I own. I have read so many more that I don't own physical copies of because I lent them from the library way 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 back when like 12 years ago. So if you're in the mood to cry and you don't mind something super cheesy and kind of younger, um, I would recommend Lurleen McDaniel. She is, like I said, a tearjerker. Okay, coming in at number two with 22 books is Louise Erdrich. And I can't hold all these up um, and you can't see them all anyway. So here's all 22 that I own. This is not her entire collective works, surprisingly. I'm missing about three books <laughs> and they are all young adult or middle grade fiction. So I'll probably order those from the book outlet soon since I am on a hunt to own her collective works. And I'm setting these down now. So just one second. So out of those 22 books, I have only read four. And I don't even care that I've only read four and I'm buying all these books of hers because she is just such a master literary artist. She is great at writing, she's great at her craft, she tells amazing tales, and they are all centered around Native American tribes, usually the Ojibwe tribe since that's the one that she is a member of and that her parents were members of, so that's why she tells the story of that tribe specifically. But they are just so lyrical and full of so many interesting rhetorical questions and questions about the nature of humanity and how we relate to one another and how we treat one another. She's one of my top 10 favorite authors of all time, which is why I own so many of her books. I plan to get to them eventually. Um, she's also done some poetry that I've read and that's probably going to be the next thing that I finish reading from her is all these poetry works. I'm really looking forward to finishing her collection one day. It's not, you know, super urgent. I just, it's a bucket list goal of mine is to, by the time I die, finish all of Louise Erdrich's collective works. And number one, which I miscounted in the beginning of this video with 31 books, is Rick Riordan. Ten of those are ebooks. I have the first two, or the only two books that are out, of the Magnus Chase series. I have three random Percy Jackson books, and I have the entire Heroes of Olympus series, all in ebook format. I also have some others, and these aren't even all of Rick's books. I do not own the Kane Chronicles, or the Guide to Norse Mythology, or the companion novels for the Heroes of Olympus series. I think it's called the Demigod Files, and then there's another, like, random extra book that I don't own, so I'm not even like owning all of his books and I still have 31 of them so that's crazy talk. I can't hold all of them up because some of them include box sets so I'll just show you the series one at a time that I own. Firstly here we have two editions of the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I originally only had these ones because they are the original paperback versions that I was first reading them when I first read the series and then I got these ones because the spines of these are so gorgeous and it's my favorite series of all time so I had to have the new versions of it so that's why I have two copies of this and don't forget three of these books in ebook as well. I've got books one and two of the Trials of Apollo series which I have been absolutely loving. I love it more than the Magnus Chase series just because I like the sense of humor in here better. I've really been enjoying these so so much. I love the little inclusion of some other characters from previous series and it's just been giving me a lot of fangirl feels. Next I've got these heavy suckers, the Percy Jackson's Guide to the Greek Gods and Greek Heroes, which is beautiful. They've got some great illustrations in them and they're just huge print and I adore them. I haven't read both of them yet, I haven't read the Greek Heroes one yet, but they're so beautiful. I love them so much. I love having them in my collection and they just give me so many happy good feelings. Next we have the Heart 
hardcover box set of the Heroes of Olympus series. It just wasn't going to do it, only having ebook versions of this series, considering, again, it's one of my favorite series of all time. I needed to have physical copies of it so I could reread it in physical form and display them proudly on my shelf. So that is why I have the box set version of those books. And finally, we have these two random guys, the Demigod Diaries, which is the companion to Heroes of Olympus. Like I said, I'm missing the Demigod Files, which goes to Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And then Demigods and Magicians, which is a Percy Jackson and Kane Chronicles crossover. These were originally published as short stories at the end of each of the Heroes of Olympus series books, but then they put all of them together in one bind up, and that is this. So I am looking forward to reading this once I finish the Kane Chronicles. I still have to read the third and final book in that series. Once I finish it, then I'll go right into this one. And then I'm also missing the Norse Mythology Guide books and I think there's two of them now so that's everything I own and everything I'm missing and that's it those are my top five most owned authors if you own a lot of copies of any of these authors let me know I think that'd be really cool and it'd be nice to talk to you about them and let me know some authors that you own a lot of copies of their books of thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video happy reading